sampling, distribution of X bar. So we're going to be talking about the sampling distribution, or in other words, the probability distribution of the sample mean. So what are the properties of the sampling distribution of X bar? So there are three things we need to know to fully describe the sampling distribution of X bar. Those are the expected value, or mean of the sampling distribution, the standard deviation, and the form or shape of the distribution. So once we know these three things, we fully understand the sampling distribution of the sample mean. So first, the expected value or mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean, which we write E of X bar is equal to mu, which is the population mean. So in other words, the mean of the sample mean is simply equal to the population mean. Now the standard deviation of the sample mean depends on whether we're sampling from a finite population or an infinite population. If we're sampling from a finite population, the standard deviation of the sample mean, which we write sigma x bar, is equal to the square root of capital N, which is the size of the population, minus lowercase n, which is the size of the sample, divided by capital N minus 1, times sigma over the square root of If we're sampling from an infinite population, the standard deviation of the sample mean, sigma x bar, is equal to sigma, the population standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size. Now you'll notice that there's only one thing different between these two formulas, and that is the square root part. This is referred to as the finite population correction factor um, because we only need to use it for a finite population. Now, if our population size, capital N, is much larger than our sample size, then the value of the population correction factor is going to be close to 1, which means that the two formulas are almost going to be exactly the same. So as a rule of thumb, We can use the simpler formula for the standard deviation of the sample mean whenever the population is infinite or the population is finite and lowercase n over capital N is less than or equal to 
0.05, which means that the sample size is 5% or less of the population size. Now you'll notice that there's two sigmas here and they're different. There's sigma x bar and there's sigma. Sigma x bar is the standard deviation of the sample mean, while sigma is the standard deviation of the population. Now so that we don't confuse the two, sigma x bar is often referred to as the standard error of the mean. Now the third thing we want to know about the sampling distribution of the sample mean is the form or shape of the sampling distribution. For example, the normal distribution has a bell shape. So we want to know what kind of shape does the sampling distribution of X bar have. Now this depends on whether the population we're sampling from is normally distributed or not. If the population that we're sampling from is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of X bar is normally distributed for any sample size n. Now if the population that we're sampling from is not normally distributed, Then we have to use the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem says that the sampling distribution of the sample mean can be approximated by a normal distribution as the sample size becomes large. So according to the central limit theorem, as the sample size becomes large, the sampling distribution of X bar becomes normally distributed. Now the term large here is kind of vague, but a sample size of at least 30 will usually guarantee that the sampling distribution of X bar is normally distributed for any population. So let's look at what we mean here. Suppose that our population has a distribution which looks like this, has this rectangular shape. So obviously this isn't a normal distribution. So the sampling distribution of X bar is only going to be normally distributed if the sample size is large enough. However, if the population that we're sampling from is normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of X bar is going to be normally distributed 
for any sample size, not only large sample size. Now let's take a look at an example. Suppose we have a population with a mean of 200, a standard deviation of 50, and we're taking samples of size 100. So the expected value of the sample mean is going to be equal to the population mean, which is 200. The standard deviation of the sample mean, which again is called the standard error of the mean, is going to be equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So this is going to be equal to 50 over 10, which is going to be equal to 5. Now the form or shape of the sampling distribution is going to be normal because the sample size is at least 30. Now how is this information useful? Well we can answer questions such as what is the probability that if we take a sample of size 100 from this population what's the probability that the sample mean is within say plus or minus 10 of the population mean. Okay. Now if we go 10 on each side of the population mean, we're in a range of 190 to 210. So what we're being asked here is to calculate the probability that x bar is between 190 and 210. Now we know that x bar has a normal distribution, so to compute this probability, what we can do is convert to standard normal. So z of 190 is going to be equal to 190 minus 200 over 5, which is negative 10 over 5, which is negative 2 z of 210 is going to be 210 minus 200 over 5, which is 10 over 5, which is equal to 2. So the probability that x bar is between 190 and 210 is going to be equal to the probability that z is between negative 2 and 2. Now, this probability here simplifies to the probability that z is less than or equal to 2 minus the probability that z is less than or equal to negative 2. Um, now we could look up these values in a table and we'll get an answer of around 0.954. So the probability that the sample mean will be within plus or minus 10 of the population mean in this example is 0.954 or 95.4%.